viral hepatitis. Viral hepatitis refers to infections of the liver due to certain viruses, which are typically called hepatitis viruses. The term hepatitis refers to any inflammation of the liver and can be due to many other causes, including medications and some inherited causes and autoimmune liver disease. I'm going to focus on uh, the commoner viral hepatitis. The term uh, encompasses several viruses which have been labeled hepatitis A to hepatitis H, but there is no progression. There is no connection between hepatitis A going on to hepatitis B or hepatitis C. They're all acquired separately. Sometimes you can get one or more together. When you get the infection, uh, you actually may not know you've got the infection. It's some people just have a mild viral illness, feel a little tired for a few days. Some patients actually become jaundiced, their eyes become yellow, skin becomes yellow, and those usually seek medical attention at the time. But uh, most commonly, uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, which I'm going to focus on, do not uh, necessarily cause the patient to become jaundiced acutely. Now, some of these virus infections can be acquired from the parent uh, during childbirth. And this is particularly common amongst patients from the uh, Far East and uh, Middle East. Uh, these patients uh, have frequently immigrated uh, to the US subsequently and uh, don't know they have the infection until they get screened. Hepatitis B and C are viruses that can result in a chronic liver infection. Why they home in on the liver is not absolutely known, but they do cause problems long term in the liver. Now, initially, they elicit a response from the immune system, which reacts to the presence of the virus in the liver cells. In this process, in uh, most patients with hepatitis B infection, the immune system will actually clear the uh, viral infection from the body. And then the patient basically develops antibodies and is essentially unlikely to have chronic liver infection subsequently. With hepatitis C, unfortunately, the clearance rate is much less maybe in the order of 10 or 15 percent. And these patients uh, continue to harbor the virus without necessarily having any symptoms until uh, later on in life. Now, both the uh, viruses, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, are generally acquired through contaminated body fluids, particularly blood. And this uh, infection can be acquired through contaminated needles, uh, tattoos, uh, certain medical uh, situations where strict uh, hygiene practice is not followed and safety practice is not followed. And as I say, the uh, patient may not feel anything when they actually get the virus, but the problems occur uh, later on. And I'm just going to show you this model of a liver, uh, which shows a normal liver here on my right. And what happens is the virus gets into the cells of the liver. And over a long period of time, uh, you get this reaction uh, where the immune system tries to fight the virus. Now, unfortunately, in the liver, as well as other parts of the body, when there is some sort of chronic inflammation, uh, which cannot be cleared completely, uh, there is a fibrosis reaction. Scar tissue develops in the liver as one of the healing measures. You don't actually necessarily get new liver tissue forming uh, when uh, the immune system comes in and kills some of the infected uh, liver cells. So if this process goes on over a long period of time, Unfortunately, patients can develop cirrhosis of the liver, which is shown here. The liver becomes very nodular and bumpy, and uh, this results in failure of the liver uh, to uh, perform its usual functions, which uh, very simply are twofold. One is it removes chemicals and toxins from the body in, and uh, secretes it into bile. And the other thing is it makes a lot of factors and uh, nutrients for the rest of the body uh, from uh, food and uh, liquids that are digested and absorbed uh, from the intestine. Uh, they come to the liver and then get processed and passed on. So the liver has a very critical role. And unfortunately, this chronic inflammatory process, which goes from the normal liver to cirrhosis, uh, very gradually can take many, many years to happen uh, in most patients. Uh, results in liver failure. And uh, one of the other complications in a few patients with uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, particularly if they've developed cirrhosis, is that um, they can develop liver cancers. 
So this is something that we monitor patients for. The majority of patients uh, have a very slow course to cirrhosis, and the longer you've had the condition, the more likely you are to develop uh, cirrhosis. I want to focus again on how these uh, infections, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, uh, are acquired. Uh, one of the commonest ways is drug use, recreational drug use, particularly intravenous drug use. And other ways are tattoos, particularly if it's not done in a sterile manner at a reputable facility. And then uh, there is sexual transmission, uh, higher incidence for hepatitis B, uh, less for hepatitis C, but still possible. Uh, many patients cannot actually tell us how they might have acquired the infection. And uh, again, medical procedures, uh, particularly when uh, IV administration of medications uh, is done, uh, the hygiene and safety practices have to be strictly followed. Uh, otherwise, that is a possible risk uh, factor for hepatitis B and C acquisition, as well as uh, dental work. Now, there is treatment available for both hepatitis B and hepatitis C uh, virus infections. Uh, not every patient needs to be treated. Uh, the treatment has to be individualized depending on the patient's circumstances. Uh, for hepatitis B, uh, the treatment uh, options include an injection, injectable form of uh, a drug called interferon, or tablets. Uh, there are several tablets uh, that can be used uh, for this. Uh, again, the treatment has to be individualized. Uh, so. If you suspect you have the infection or you have it and have not been assessed, I would definitely recommend you being uh, seen by a qualified specialist for this condition. Uh, for hepatitis C as well, uh, there has been treatment available for many years. Again, uh, it has to be individualized. The mainstay are an injectable drug, uh, interferon, which I mentioned for hepatitis B but it is used far more commonly for hepatitis C. And uh, presently, the standard treatment involves uh, the interferon shot once a week usually, as well as a tablet uh, called ribavirin, which is taken every day. Uh, there are newer drugs coming because not all patients respond to the treatment. And uh, these drugs are undergoing trials and hopefully in the next two to three years, some of them will be available uh, outside clinical trials for use with patients, uh, but there is definitely hope for the future. Uh, if you've been treated for hepatitis C in the past and uh, did not respond to the treatment, uh, you need to still follow up with your liver specialist because, as I mentioned, newer drugs are going to be available and there are modifications to existing uh, drug regimens that may help you. So I would uh, still urge you to uh, see the liver specialist and uh, get reassessed. Uh, the other issue is uh, prevention. Uh, apart from taking measures which I alluded to previously, additional measures include avoiding unprotected sexual contact. And also there is a vaccination for hepatitis B virus prevention and all close family members uh, should, often infected patients, should get this in, uh, vaccination series through their primary physician. In addition, if you have chronic hepatitis B or hepatitis C virus infection, you should be vaccinated uh, for hepatitis A, uh, which would probably require a blood test to check if you're susceptible. And uh, if you are, you should definitely get this uh, vaccine. My colleagues and I at Bay Area Gastroenterology are specialists in the treatment of these chronic liver conditions, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, as well as other liver diseases. And if you have any concerns or questions, uh, please make an appointment to see us. Thank you.